Hey, welcome back. And like we promised, we broke out the TIG welder we picked up from CyberWeld. And what a machine it is. We'll get into that in just a second. But let's walk through some TIG 101 steps, if you will. Yeah, now if you haven't been around one for a while, I've never seen really a TIG setup. We'll go through real quick. You've got a ground here. And once I push my pedal, I'm going to strike an arc right at the end of this tungsten to my base metal, form that loop. And that's going to create all the heat, you know, essentially the fire to melt my metal. Well, then I've got to come back with a filler rod, depending on what you're welding, you know, steel, stainless steel, aluminum, right. you name it. Now, as soon as I depress my pedal and I strike an arc between my tungsten and the base table, creating my electrical loop, I can start melting that metal really quickly, but I've got to fill it with my filler rod. So depending on what you're welding, whether it's steel or aluminum and the thickness, you pick your filler rod and you can start dropping beads down and make that nice stack of dimes, that real pretty weld you're used to seeing with a yeah, T-Welder. There is a certain rhythm you develop with filling it in and the throttle and so forth. And that just takes practice, so yeah. that's all right. Okay, let me show you something else. Now what a lot of guys will do is sharpen the tungsten improperly, all right? So one thing you want to do is get a grinding wheel designated just for the tungsten, okay? And I like to sharpen mine when the wheel comes down this way. You get a nice uniform edge around it and you get something like this as opposed to sideways. Now what happens if you sharpen it sideways is you get this wandering in the arc, right? Kind of like a fish swimming. So it's real simple. Once you've got that tip prepped and you've got it inserted in your TIG welder, you're actually ready to go. But we'll give you a couple more details. You know, we got different colors. So the red is typically for DC or for steel. Now you used to do green for aluminum, which was right. pure tungsten. Uh, but we've kind of gotten away from that, especially with the newer welders that we'll show you. Now we've got cerium. So 2% cerium is the gray. And what's nice about that is you can use it for steel, DC, or AC aluminum. Awesome. So it's really nice. You can almost have one type of tungsten line around and the different sizes for the different thicknesses. Right. You got different cuffs that shield the gas, different tips and so forth. And like we said on this guy, you got yourself a wireless pedal. Yeah. So pretty cool machine, man. Why don't you get in there and tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so kind of alluded. Some of the new technology, one is this Dynasty 200 series from Miller. Now this thing is awesome. I bought one a couple of years ago. It's the most amazing machine I've ever owned. It'll do AC or DC, so aluminum or steel. But look at the size of it. This is a cooler. This is separate. This is to cool the torch. The welder is only this big, but this is a 200 amp unit. You used to have a welder this big. Yeah. So think about the portability or just the size it's going to take up in your shop but it's all because of the inverter technology. So this is the new stuff. And again, over and off 110 or 220, whatever you've got available, it automatically reads it. But the controls that you get, and we'll walk into a little bit of it on the aluminum, is unbelievable. So you can just set it pretty much on kind of your auto standards and you can get moving. Right. But as you get better and better, and you start to really watch what the arc is doing and how your weld is forming, you can come over here and you can change, you know, pulsing, frequency, balance, you name it to get your weld cleaner, smoother, tighter, whatever you want, this machine can do it with just yeah. the flick of a dial. So why don't we get some metal out here? Why don't we strike some arcs? Yeah. Start burning some stuff. All right, welcome back. No pressure on Willie here, but we got him set up on the TIG <laughs> welder and we got steel. So we set ourselves on DC and we're ready to rock. Yeah, and when it comes to TIG welding, man, it is a little intimidating at first. You're not gonna be laying down perfect beads initially, but you can gain momentum and skill really fast. Now, a couple things to remember is you wanna have your handle here about 70 to 80 degrees at most, right? And a lot of guys will find if they come straight up, they'll get a nice arc. Steel is a lot, a lot slower than aluminum when it reacts, so you could actually keep this guy on there for a second before it starts pulling and bubbling up. Whereas aluminum, as you know, it's a little more volatile when you throw that arc at it. All right, now Willie's going to be working that pedal to control the amount of heat that he puts in it. Right, there's that one bead I was telling you about. Then you come down here, you start getting a little rhythm to it. Start forcing it in a little better. So the nice thing about having that throttle control is, like we talked about earlier, you don't have a cold proud bead and you don't have a flat wet bead, you can really work the heat that you put in it and when you're adding the metal so you can shape it, you can get the penetration you want. And steel is a great place to start. It's real simple. You can string some stringers. They're really small yeah. and tight. 
And the next step up from that is hitting the aluminum. Stay tuned, we'll have more of Cyberweld, the largest online distributor of Miller Electric branded products in the world.